Hello everyone, hello Dr. Bednicek, uh, my name is Miguel Pacheco, and for this week's segment on my vlog, I would like to talk to you all about relationship building between patients and providers. I feel like it's very important that both learn to have interpersonal communication skills. I want to address that this is a team effort. It's really important that um, the patient and providers work together through collaborative communication to address specific needs, understand values, and beliefs. So I'm gonna talk to you about a little past experience I had. I tore my ACL. I went in for a meeting with my primary practitioner. I sat in the room. The staff was great, the facility was awesome, but the encounter I had with the practitioner was terrible. Um, he came in, he didn't look at me when he said hello. He just kept looking at the chart, conversation unfolds. He says, you have problems. You need to fix those problems. I looked at him and said, yes, I have problems, but I need to fix those problems. We need to have those problems. We need to fix those problems. I just felt like there was, he just lacked empathy and he wasn't really even trying to get to know me. And he was, wasn't concerned at all about how I felt. And I just feel like he just lacked empathy and he needs to just build some interpersonal skills. Okay, so health communication, what is it? It's a discussion of health promotion between patients and providers. This can be, um, it could be a campaign, it could be individuals, it could even just be the general population. Um, this exchange is really important. It's important that the patient and provider uh, create a shared meeting. This is, the, this is the start of building the relationship between the two. So just as discussed in class, and in Shavio's readings, um, it explicitly states that the key element to health communication is establishing shared meaning. Um, in order to prove health outcomes, professionals should engage, empower, and influence their patients. By doing this, you're creating a relationship with one another. Not only is it the health professional's duty um, to establish this relationship, but it is also the patient's. As well as the medical professionals having their own duties, it's very important that the patient knows that they have to take their part in the process as well. Um, I feel as though it's really important that the patient expresses any concerns, values, and establishes um, a goal for both to work towards. It's stated that 25% of all patients report unanswered questions after going to the, their visit. Well, I guarantee those 25% of those patients that don't get their answers, um, they're not writing down their answers. You need to be an advocate for your health. You need to be able to go in there prepared and ready to go. It's not just up to the practitioner. So I believe the cornerstone of communication just starts with listening. I feel like it's one of the most important aspects. And by the practitioner listening to the patient's concerns and values or whatever it might be, this is the first attempt to creating shared meaning, as I talked about before, and that will achieve the best possible outcome for the patient. There are three main goals in patient to provider communication. First, creating a good interpersonal relationship, and that's both practitioner and patient working together, communicating with one another. Second, you need to be able to facilitate docs any exchange of information that would benefit the patient. And third, include the patient in any of the decision-making processes. This will help them become an advocate for their own health. So I believe those are just a few points that can help boost the atmosphere in a positive direction between both the patient and provider and their relationship. I want you to remember that this is a communicative, collaborative process. It takes two to tango. With that being said, docs, you guys just got school. Thanks class for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.